Hey, guess what time it is? It's time for Breedin' Radio. Brought to you by Pertnier Outdoors. This is a spring edition, which means it's turkey season, which means there's turkeys out there breeding them. Like getting on top and, and breeding them. That's what turkeys do. It's pretty cool if you've ever seen it. But anyway, listen to these stories. These are real people from right around the corner. We're going out there and putting turkeys on the ground. They ain't breeding them no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Bet you that was pretty loud, wasn't it? Well, you're here for week three, part two of Breeding Them Radio. And this is going to be with uh, Jimmy and I's uncle, uh, Chris Harvey, and his son, Joe. Uh, Joe shot his bird back the first weekend. I think it was May 2nd he shot his bird. And uh, Uncle Chris shot his this morning, which is May 20th. So I uh, wanted to get these guys on and tell their story. We still got to chase Uncle Tim down to hear his story about the the big double-bearded bird he shot. Uh, I think it was last Sunday. I think it was last Sunday. Um, maybe it was Monday. Maybe it was three weeks ago. don't remember. But uh, starting to finally see some people have success. And uh, good to see that. So um, enjoy this episode. And I did not listen to any of this conversation, so I have no idea what they're going to talk about. I am exhausted, and I'm trying to put this all together, and Big Jim finished his recordings at 9 o'clock at night and said, uh, here you go, and I have a goal to get these posted by uh, midnight tonight. So I am just going to record this intro and put it out on the airwaves and uh, let you all enjoy, and I will listen with you all when it gets posted. So enjoy good luck this weekend uh it is going to be thursday when you hear this so you'll be heading into the weekend so i hope you're all staying healthy happy and uh getting out to chase turkeys around a little bit and uh having some good luck with that and it seems like we've got some good warm weather things are starting to green up and maybe the the birds are going to start having a little bit more fun with us so good luck out there have a great weekend and uh happy memorial day most of all uh thank you to all the veterans who have served and the ones who have given it all uh, we appreciate you and uh it's definitely a weird one not being able to celebrate with everyone and go to parades and and ceremonies but uh we're thinking of you so thank you everybody have a great one all right we are here with uh uncle chris and joe um both of which have had success here so far um it was a slow start for the harvey crew here i figured this would probably be the first weekend we'd be filling up the podcast with our own stories, but luckily there was a bunch of other people out there that took care of that for us. Um, but I think Joe wasn't Joe's bird in the first weekend. Yeah. Second day. So what happened with that one? So, uh, my friend has some land he's got permission on and he had, he had a, can I swear on this? You can do whatever you want to do. (laughs) in there so we went out it's on the uh, corner is that five and five there yeah it's on the there you don't want to tell them that much information okay restart <laughs> i didn't tell them i'm telling them where we're hunting you were in nova Second scotia time. right yeah up in canada yeah and uh we we have this little corner of the field there, and we set up uh, 30 minutes before light, and we're sitting there, and we got a big gully behind us, and we're in right 100 yards from the corner of this big uh, open field. And we could see down into the gully. We could see the birds in the trees once it got a little bit light out, and they were gobbling like crazy. So we really didn't have – we didn't do much to shoot them. I think, I think it was at 540 we let out, I think, two sets of calls. And we just sat, and by 6 a.m., they flew down. And we had a hen decoy out there in the field. And the hen came out first. They came out right in the corner. And the hen came out first and went out, like, into the middle of the field. So we're like, damn it, you know, I don't know if they're going to come to our decoy or if they're going to follow that hen way out. But uh, two big gobblers came straight into the decoy. And I think they were, like, 30 yards out. And I think they kind of started to see my friends. It was 10 yards, like up the field for me and he was kind of out in the open and he goes nail him so I shot the bird I think it was probably like a 35 year shot I was through a little bit of brush on my turkey 
And then he actually shot one at like 45 yards. It was right behind it right after I shot. So it, it was a pretty easy hunt. We just kept, I think we called twice and just sat there. So did he know those birds were roosted there or was that something you guys moved in on? He had, he had them roosted like every night that week before we went in there. Do they so gobble a lot on roost or no? Yeah. Yeah, they shut up once they hit the ground. They were gobbling like crazy while they were in the tree. And then I think they only gobbled like once or twice before they came into us. But they were pretty much full strut right down the hedgerow of that field. So you pretty much just let them come in like they normally would and then took care of business. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't really have to do a terrible amount of calling or anything. They were they were coming right in. It, it is interesting, though, that the decoy worked that well. I've, I've not been a big fan of decoys, but uh, in this case, you know, Joe said it worked great because there was a hen with him, and he said these turkeys came it, off and went right to the decoy. Yeah, they split right off of that head. I've, I've never seen a decoy work that good before, but once they saw it, they were, they were on a beeline to it. Yeah, that's interesting because it seems like if you have just a solo hen, they don't really pay much attention to it. But um, what yeah. I've been hearing a lot from people this year is um, the the down hen with the like quarter strut Jake over it seems to really piss the gobblers off. Yeah, yeah, I've but, never never tried that. Yeah, it might be just something where they came off a roost that quick and they just thought it was another hen. You know, I don't know. If, yeah, maybe if that was mid morning where they'd been with a hen for a while, I don't know if they would have wandered off it that easily or not. But Mm -hmm. that's awesome that it worked out that good you guys sent me that snapchat or joe you sent me that snapchat where you were standing on your bird and you scroll down the field and there's another one flopping i'm like jesus <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah mine not came very out often and... not very often you get to double up yeah no no it's rare yeah i shot mine i shot a little low i almost cut his damn neck off so mine just piled and then the bird behind it it was it was a pretty far shot for my friend, but the thing turned and it started running. He popped one off and then it tried to fly and he basically just dropped it out of the air. That's awesome. So Chris, how was the start of your season? I know you were on some birds on some state land. Um, and I heard you, I, this might be a rumor, but I heard you missed one. <laughs> Pure rumor. No, that, no, that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, I got to give Joe credit. Joe kind of got us on the, these, these hot birds on the state land like the week before the season opened. And, you know, I was going to go down to the hunting camp, you know, our, our family camp and hunt. But, uh, but it seemed like there was going to be a lot of people down there with the neighbors and all. So, uh, you know, Joe took me down there to the state land and we, you know, we went there roosting. And I, I was shocked. I honestly could not believe how many, how many different birds were gobbling at nighttime. Uh, so we got pretty excited about that. That was the week before. Opening day was on a Friday. So uh, what I did is I went back down there a couple more nights, kept listening to it. Every night it was in the same spot. There was actually a couple birds up on this ridge and then a couple on the other side of the valley. But I had one, one ridge in particular. It was probably only 60 or 70 acres of state land. Um, on top of this ridge that you had to get there. So basically, I went, I went there during the daytime. I found a spot before opening day because I knew we'd have to navigate in the dark because uh, being state land, I wanted to get there early. So, you know, that's what we did. I found the spot and, uh, you know, probably had to go about three or 400 yards up this hill on a, on a finger uh, right on the edge of a ravine up to the top. So I'm opening day. Uh, you know, David, my other son, and Joe and I went up there, all three of us, and set up in the spot. And I mean, it was, dude, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And I, obviously, I was not going to use a flashlight. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we got there early. We were on the side of the road at like 10 after four because we wanted to beat everybody else. Got out of the truck, got in the woods, got up this hill. You know, it took quite a while in the dark, about 20 minutes. I think we were, we were probably at the tree by quarter of five, right, Joe? Yeah. I mean, we were, yeah. we were in pitch dark at this tree. And sure enough, by 
probably by a little after five, by 10 after five, quarter after five. I mean, this bird, I think there might've been one or two that morning, but the bird started gobbling right on the roost and it was nonstop gobbling. But when he came down uh, that morning, he kind of went, he went away from us, kind of went south of us on the side of the hill. And I, you know, I, I think he had some hens with him and we played around, kept calling, but he wouldn't come in. So long story short, we kind of broke off from that. Uh, we didn't want to spook the bird. So we basically, you know, he was gone. We took off. Uh, the next day was Saturday. The next day, Joe wanted to with his buddy, so, which was a smart move. Um, yeah. So, so I invited my brother, Tim, and Tim brought one of his friends. And Saturday morning, the three of us navigated up this hill again at like zero dark 30. Uh, we got up top of the ridge, and we might have gone like 20, 20 yards further up. I mean, it was so dark up there, you could barely, like I said, see anything. You had to really find a tree and get in there quiet. Um, and that morning, same thing. The bird was gobbling nonstop on the roost above us. But when he flew down, we saw him fly, fly down, and he, and he flew right towards the top of the ridge, and he went up top towards the fields. We knew there was fields up there. So... He did the opposite of what he did Friday. So, I mean, he would talk, he, he would certainly answer every, even when he was on the ground, he would answer any clucks or any, any kind of call in I did. Um, so we lived there and we went to a different state land about three miles away and didn't have much luck. And we, you know, my brother Tim says, he goes, why don't we go back to that spot about 1030? He goes, sometimes you get a late morning bird fired up. Yeah. Uh, so the three of us went up there, went back up to that spot, set back up, and uh, the three of us spread out. We were all about 20 yards apart facing uphill. And I think Tim fell asleep against his tree. It was a beautiful morning out. He was taking a nap. And I was just calling. Like, every, you know, every 10 or 15 minutes, I'd do some calls. I'd try the slate. You know, I, I, I would do the box call, go back and forth. And no shit about quarter after 11, dude. I get, we got double gobbles up above us, probably Jesus. about 100 yards away. And, and uh, I look over at Tim's buddy, Tyler, and he's <laughs> looking at me. And he points over at Tim, and I look over to my right, and I see Tim's head down like he's sleeping still. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, these birds are done. They're coming in. And, uh, you know, I keep calling them, and they're double over it. All of a sudden, I hear a hen off to my left, you know, and Tyler was to my left. Tim was to my right on the hillside. I hear a hen, like really sharp clucks. I mean, you know, really kind of mimicking what I was doing. She comes out of nowhere about 20 yards up in front of Tyler, and she's clucking away, and these birds are coming down at the same time. They're about 60 yards out above me, and they get over towards Tim, and I see Tim get his gun up. Uh, but Tim told me later, you know, they're a little too far out. He didn't want to risk a shot. Um, but it was almost like that hen got in there and interjected, and they turned and went uphill. They were gobbling the whole time, right up until quarter of 12. They were, went back up the hill, just gobbling away, and then the hen turned and walked away, and the whole thing was over, you know? <laughs> so, so then, I thought you were going to say Tim was just waking up when he picked his gun up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he he woke up pretty quick when he heard that heard the gobbles. But uh, so then we move on to day three. Day three, I take uh, you know I take uh, my nephew Sean up with me, and because uh, Sean had been hunting the same area, he had actually been on a bird across the road the day before. He'd been scouting that same area, so I took Sean up with me that Sunday morning. Same routine, zero dark thirty you know, bouncing off trees, getting up through the woods in the dark. We get up there, but I went farther up the hill. So I went probably about 30 or 40 yards farther up the hill. Now I'm probably only, probably only 80 yards from the top of this ridge. And it's pretty much open woods at this point. And uh, we set up against a tree. And of course, the, the bird is, is roosted to our right, like south of us. And he's gobbling like crazy, gobbling like crazy on roost. Um, and I, my decision that morning is I was not going to call too much. So I don't think I caught, I, I didn't do anything. He hit the ground. And when he hit the ground, I could hear him going away from us. 
so I, you know, I just did a, a few soft clucks, uh, did a few very soft clucks, and, um, and he gobbled, and I could hear him getting closer. I'm like, shit, he likes us. He's coming in. So, you know, both of us had our guns up. We're excited. Pretty soon, you know, Sean whispers. He's like, hey, he goes, I can see him. And he's full, you know, full strut. We can hear him spitting and drumming. He's coming in. And, man, he hung up. He came out. I paced it. It was like 55 paces uphill from us. It, it was quite a distance. But he just hung up there, and I'm watching him. And I, I had this new choke tube on my gun. I had a three-inch mag, and I'm like, you know, he's not, he's not coming in. And I, I thought I could make the shot. And so I tried it. Long story short, I shot, and he flew off. Um, you know, and I, I regretted that. I felt, you know, I felt really bad. I don't like to shoot at an animal and not harvest it. But, um, yeah. I, you know, you get in these situations where I, I thought I could reach, reach them. And then, of course, when it got lighter out, you know, I saw a bunch of saplings in between me and this turkey with some BBs in them. So um, it wasn't as clear as I thought. But It's hard when they're hung up, you know. It is. And, and in that case, he was looking right at us, so even though I hadn't called in a while. <laughs> he was looking right at us. And if I had had a decoy, maybe that would have drawn him in. I remember thinking that. You know? Just about just about every podcast you're on, we're going to get you with that hunt up or hunt over or, or hunt, hunt thing. out. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I was just going to say after that, we just kind of hunt out and uh, <laughs> we kind of checked out the area and did some more calling. And we did, obviously, we searched for the bird. He flew downhill. Um, yeah. We did a pretty good search. No sign of the bird. So we went back up the hill and set up, did some more calling. So that concluded three days of hunting state land. It was pretty exciting. Uh, and then at the same time that I was at the state land, uh, my brother Tim was hunting some uh, land he's got close to where he lives uh, here in Lima. And, you know, it's for 20 years, there's, there's birds this place he hunts. I mean, I, I've killed birds out there. He's killed birds. Um, but he just, you know, he, he'd hear them just like I was experiencing. Him and his buddy would get at them, but, you know, you're basically on the edge of a field with a big creek, and then it goes up into woods, and there's only about 400 yards of woods, and then it goes to fields and then a big road. So uh, he invited me to go with him the next time. So the next weekend, I go hunting with Tim, and we go out in the field, we set up on the edge of the field and, you know, staring probably about 60, 70 yards away across this big Creek. There's a bird gobbling like crazy over there. There's actually two of them that time. There's a couple birds gobbling. And when they flew down, they all stayed on that side of the Creek, except for one hen. <laughs> the hen flew right over next to us. And that was actually a lot of fun. It was probably about 20 feet behind us. Tim was facing the field. He couldn't see it. And I'm facing the woods, and obviously I saw it fly right next to me. And Tim's got his big paddle call, and he's, he's calling away, and I'm, I reach over with my left hand. You know, we're against the tree together, and I'm patting his leg to stop. <laughs> <laughs> sure as shit, the thing came out to his left probably like 10 feet away, so that was pretty cool. But, you know, the gobbler just stayed on the other side of the creek. So, so we made up a game plan. We said, okay, next time we'll come back. Um, you know, my suggestion was, I said, it's going to be a lot of work, but why don't we walk all the way around, come in the field by the big road, and we'll get in the woods with them because I don't think they're crossing the creek to the field. So, yeah. so we, did a, we did a weekday hunt. We watched the weather, found a nice day. Uh, this is the second week of season. Went out probably a Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and we got in the woods. Tim had scouted a spot. We got in the woods on the same side of the creek as the turkeys. And, uh, but we weren't close enough. They basically gobbled. Uh, we did have a hen roosted above us. That was cool, it flew down, but she went right to the, the gobbler. And, you know, we never saw the gobbler, but he was probably a hundred yards away. We could hear him and, and they basically did their thing, went about their day. So, um, you know, we went to work that day and then, you know, this is, this is a week ago. So then we decided, okay, the next time, we got to get closer to where they roost. So that brings us to today. So basically today we, uh, we got up early. I got to his house at, by probably 20 after four and we hiked out there and went out, uh, got into the woods and Tim, 
Tim, you know, he had scouted a different spot. So we actually went in the woods and we just kept walking deeper and deeper and in the woods and it's dark and I can see the sky start starting to lighten. And I'm like, just how far are we going? I mean, we're going to be right underneath these turkeys. So we get in the woods, we find a nice tree and set down. And, and now we're only about 60 yards from this creek. And Tim whispers to me, he points straight in front of me and he goes, he goes, them birds are going to be roosted right on the edge of that creek, right in front of you. And sure as shit, like two minutes later, this bird gobbles right in that exact spot. I mean, it couldn't have worked out any more perfect. So, um, so at that point, we just sat back and enjoyed the morning. I mean, it was probably, probably five after five, he started gobbling. And then, uh, you know, probably every, every two minutes he'd gobble. And then we discovered we saw four hens around us. There was two hens to our right, and there was probably two hens to our left. Uh, not far, probably 40 to 50 yards away. So at this point, you, you know, I could see the one hen was so close, I could see her head sticking out. And I was afraid to move, move my gun or anything. I had it up on my knee already. And uh, right before the turkey was going to fly down, I basically did a couple of soft clucks just to let him know that I was there uh, with my good old easy helper, which I swear by at, at first light. And uh, we waited. And when he flew down, he basically flew down to my left, which was right in my shooting lane. So he flew down, I shifted my gun over, got it up on my knee, and I could see him about, he was probably about 40 yards away, but the hill dipped down a little bit. So I could see, I could see his fan, and I could see him strutting. And at the same time, the turkey in the tree behind us basically started yelping. And Tim, Tim was doing some soft calling, and then the turkey in the tree was actually calling. So I'm like, well, we got a live turkey here. She's going to do her job and bring him over. So I could see him strutting, uh, and he actually started to come closer to us. He was still about 35 yards away. So as he gets closer to us, all of a sudden the hen flies down right next to Tim about, you know, probably about 15 yards to my right on the other side of Tim. And she got spooked for some reason. She clucked and she ran off, and that's what stopped my turkey. I mean, he, he basically stopped in his tracks, and all I could see was the neck up because the hill dropped off a little bit. And, uh, you know, with the ground cover, I, I couldn't see his full body with the way the hill was, the way it dropped yeah. off in front of me. But uh, he basically turned around, and I felt like I was going to lose him. He turned around because there was already two hens that had flown in the other direction. And he, he turned, and he started taking some steps, and I was already leveled on him. I was rested on my knee. I had a beautiful sight picture. So I took the shot, man. I, I didn't want to let him get away, and uh, and he dropped. He dropped like a ton of bricks. I shot him, and, uh, you know, I, I put another round in. You know, I jumped to my feet, prepared to shoot again, and, and he wasn't even moving. He was just laying there. So I put the <laughs> gun on. <laughs> I ran up to him, and he was pretty much done. He started flopping around a little bit. You know, I had to – I just put my foot on his neck. Yeah. and uh, But he he was pretty much done, dude. He was – he was, a, he was a hell of a bird. I got to admit, it's the biggest bird I've ever gotten. Uh, the one I got last year up there at camp was pretty nice. But yeah. this one, this one was big. And his spurs, his spurs were so big that when he was flopping around, I was using my gun to block his legs. I was actually worried about <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the pictures. Of, they're like very sharp and they're like almost an inch and a half long, dude. So I didn't, I didn't see any pictures of the spur, but when, when you sent me – the pictures of the bird himself, I'm like, Jesus, that's a freaking giant. Just the rope, you know, beard on him. I'm like, good God, that's a huge one. Oh, I I should have weighed him. You know, Jimmy, I, I should have weighed him, but I didn't. Uh, but he was a heavy bird. He was definitely over 20 pounds. He was a big bird, big mature bird. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, I had to work today, like, you know, like most people. So I had to, right. I, had to I had a little bit of a, I had a little bit of a timeline. Yeah, but I mean, the bird was down by ten to six, and anybody who hunts, as you know, to share that with your family, whether it's whether it's a good friend, your kids, or your brother, right, or your uncle, you know, we just sat there and celebrated. You know, after three mornings of hunting these birds, and just to have success, you know, and Tim got his huge bird last week, 
So, right. you know, we were, we were on cloud nine, you know, and we took pictures and, and really enjoyed the moment and then hiked out back to his house, got about 20 minutes, got to his house and, you know, had some coffee on his back deck. We took measurements and, uh, that's awesome. You know, it was just, yeah. It, I mean, as, as any of your listeners know today, today here in Rochester was a beautiful day, you know, 70 degrees, sunny, you, you couldn't have had a better morning to be in the woods. Honestly, it was just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I, you know, Adam, Adam had the day off and he was going down to where we were. We had some action last weekend, didn't make it happen. And he was going down and he was like, man, he's like, he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm working in the Southern tier. He's like, he's like, you got to meet me there. We'll be done by six 30. You'd be on your way. And I'm like, the problem is, is I've been hunting for, you know, what's, what is it now? The 20th. I've probably hunted 10 days. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to shoot something and have to jet ass off to work. I was yeah. like, at this, at this point, when I shoot something, I want to sit there and enjoy it. So sure. I told him this morning, I'm like, <clears throat> that's not going to happen because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to shoot the bird and then I got to rush to get it cleaned up and get it processed. And then I got to yeah. go to work still. So I was like, I got five days coming up here to go hunt. So I'm going to take my time. And, uh, this morning I did go out and listen, um, over on my buddy's property just for an hour. I, I left the truck for first light, but then I just kind of stayed at the truck and listened after that. And, yeah. uh, I was home by six and working by six thirty. So, um, I didn't hear anything and I'm getting to the point now where before I was kind of like, well, they're probably here, you know, I'm just, they're just not talking. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, if they're not talking at least one roost gobble or something, they're not here. No, because I mean, I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of people posting on Facebook how they're not hearing anything. They're having a rough season, and you know, I, you know, I, I've been lucky. Like my experiences, every single hunt, well, except for one, I went out late morning Sunday. I hunted, you know, our land, uh, you know, our family land out here in Lima, but um, and that's a whole other story. I got a good coyote story for you later, but <laughs> <laughs> basically, every single one of my hunts, Jimmy, has been a bird on the roost gobbling like crazy. You know, you can usually see it in the tree. It's close by, you know, but just everything you want in a hunt, just, you know, ton, even, even at the state land where I fired birds up at 11 in the morning. I mean, it's just, it's just been a blast. It's been a lot of fun, but these mornings like this, if you're not hearing them, then, then there's, there can't be one there because everywhere that's, I've gone, if there's a gobbler, they're gobbling. That's where I'm starting to lean. I'm like, if I, if I got an area that I'm not hearing something, I need to quit wasting time with it because it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Cause like, uh, like they say on the hunting public, they're gobbling somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they are. And you know, we've been, you know, my, my whole family has been very fortunate. You know, we've been here in turkeys. We've been lucky. You know, I, I've done, I've done seven hunts seven hunts and six of them were at first light with birds you know the other hunt i slept in a little bit went out probably like seven thirty, eight o'clock and just hunted that you know the land that i own that's not far from my house and you know kind of just hunted till noon doing little setups it was a beautiful day out last sunday so yeah it was. Uh, I, I did i did have a i had a coyote <laughs> sneak up on me it seems like whenever i whenever i go to the land i own if I'm goose hunting or coyote or turkey hunting, I always call predators in. And I was out there, it was about 11 o'clock Sunday. And my back is to a field. I'm facing the woods because I had just walked through the field and hunted that. I wasn't really worried about that field. I wanted to see what was in the woods in front of me. So I went about 20 feet into the woods. I set up and I was nice and relaxed. I'm doing some calling. And, uh, after about a half hour, I look over. I thought I saw a bird out in the field to the right of me. So I, I grab my binoculars. As soon as I pick up my binoculars, and I look, look over my shoulder to my right, and I'm looking out in the field, I hear something behind me, like literally like 10 feet behind me scurrying in the leaves. And I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, did I have a turkey sneak up on me? Or what the hell is there? Or maybe it's just a squirrel. So I put down the binoculars 
and I turn my head to the left, and here, here's a big old coyote prancing away towards the field. I'm like, holy shit, he was right up on me. Yeah. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it wasn't coyote season. Otherwise, I would have took a shot at him, but, you know. There's, there's but, uh, a season on those? Yeah, I, I guess there is. <laughs> so for this uh yeah, yeah for this po- for this podcast i'll leave it for another day but i i let it go to live free and uh kill turkeys and deer and destroy our habitat but. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was i was sitting in my buddy's woods the other day friday morning i didn't have time to really hunt but i wanted to listen to his woods and i had that happen to me Did and i like- I, I, I wasn't even calling he just happened to really? be strolling through, so. Yeah, this this one came right up on me, dude. He was a, he was a nice looking coyote, and the weird part is, he ran out in the field and didn't care. I mean, this is broad daylight, and he's standing in the field about forty yards away, just staring at me, <laughs> and uh, you know, but, I'm moving I'm moving around looking at him, and and then, uh, you know, he was encouraged to run off, so he ran off. They That's they don't know what to they don't know what to make of you when when you're making turkey noises and they, they come don't. into it, it's like even when they see the movement they don't want to run away. Yeah. They, yeah. they still no, want to go after they still want to go after that turkey. It seems like. Yeah. As soon soon as I saw him, as soon as I saw him, I reached down and I used my easy clucker. I started you know doing some clucks and stuff to try to draw his attention. It was fun. I wanted to see what he'd do. Yeah. But uh, oh yeah, Joe. Joe's got a pretty crazy uh, coyote story, too, from one of his turkey hunts that opening weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah, we were out on some land. When you guys took Dave out. Yeah, I yep. took uh, Dave out. Yep. And uh, Dave set up on the, edge of a fi- uh, on the edge of the field, and he's the only one with a gun. Yep. I didn't bring a gun. I was just calling for him. And I'm probably like 15 yards behind him. So I'm calling away. We got birds. How many? We had like four or five birds going. They were Quite a few. Yeah, we were surrounded. Like, it, it was a great morning to be out. Yeah. And uh, we're calling, and I hear something behind me, and I'm sitting up against the tree with my friend, who's also helping call. And uh, we turn around, and there's a coyote running at us. And we're like, <laughs> okay, maybe it's going to see us, run away, something. <laughs> the thing runs, like, probably 10 feet from me, right behind me. And it was funny, because Dave was actually sitting on a deer trail. It's the only place he could, like, kind of nestle into the corner of that field. Yep. Yeah. And the coyote was going right for the deer trail that Dave was sitting on. It was going to run So it was, right it was about to run into me. Right into Dave. So me and my friend were like, I, I don't want to, like, make too much noise, but we wanted to spook it off. So yeah. I stand up, and I'm like, you know, get out of here. I'm, like, waving my arms. It just stands there and looks at me. The thing <laughs> wouldn't run away. I had to, like, step towards it. And eventually, like, trotted off probably 40 yards away. And it, just, it turns back. It looks. And the thing never – it never ran. It looked at it, – it's like it couldn't tell what we were. It slowly just kind of, like, trotted off. Like, oh, I guess it's not a turkey. Yeah, I mean, but I, I was sitting was alone. Weird. I was sitting alone with Joe and Josh Phelps behind us. And, like, I think Josh Phelps and you stood up and were, like, yelling a yeah. little bit. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. Like, I was like, what are we doing yeah. now? Yeah, so that was pretty funny, and like, thank God I didn't run up behind me. I would, I would have shit my pants. I don't know. Did you even know it was there? No, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. like, it was gonna run. Right yeah. It was, it was not a beeline to run right on top of him. Yeah, that's all. You see, a, a good friend would have let that coyote run right over the top of him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, I know. They're too, they're too kind. Mm. Yeah. Must be something with you guys and that. coyotes, because. It was your youth hunt, your last youth hunt, Joe, that I pegged that freaking coyote with a rock because it wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, the coyote ran right by us up the hill and scared that turkey off. Remember that? Yeah. 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 I was just about looking for a rock to throw at it. Yeah. I couldn't find anything in my area to throw at the thing, but it wasn't the, moving away. The, the coyote the left you, Jimmy, and ran uphill. And actually, <laughs> it walked right by Adam. Adam was on the other side of Joe. Like, wow. It walked right by me. They get so focused. Yeah, I mean, I I stood up. I was sitting on a tree on the side hill, and I was calling for you guys, and I could tell the birds weren't doing what we wanted them to, so I was trying to circle them. And when I got up from the tree and went to walk across the side hill, all of a sudden there was a coyote standing there looking at me, and it was like 15 yards. 
And I'm like, <laughs> how is this thing not running away? So the birds were gobbling. So I just kept on calling. And then the thing just started like posturing towards me and it like actually took four or five steps towards me. So it was probably only like 10 yards away. Wow. And then oh, I bent over, yeah. I bent over and grabbed a rock and I was like, I'm like, how is this thing not running away? And I called again, the birds gobbled and then it started like towards me. So I just cocked back and freaking whipped the rock at it and whacked it. And it freaking went running off. And I'm like, all right, good. That thing's out of here. And then you guys called me like five minutes later. And you're like, freaking coyote ran up the hill and spooked the turkey off. <laughs> yeah. it, it, ran, it ran right up to that goblin turkey above us. That was a good youth hunt. We had some great youth hunts yeah. down there at the camp. Oh, for sure. After getting pegged with a rock, the thing continues to run towards the turkeys. Yeah, I guess he was hungry. <laughs> yeah, I remember looking at it. Because I was sitting right there in the wide open. And I see a coyote come run up the hill. And I'm like, it, it, I know it saw me. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking back at Adam. I'm like, well, what do I do right now? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. We, we all know what we'd like to do, but unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah. unfortunately you can't that time of year. Well, the, the crazy thing is if you try to go out coyote hunting, if you're honestly just coyote hunting, I never have any luck. I don't you see never, the damn yeah, thing. Yeah. I can't get them within 200 yards of me. I know. I had the absolute best opportunity I've ever had in my life at a coyote this year. Um, I was on my buddy's property on the farm and I had the caller out in the middle of the field and it was like right at dark. I started calling <clears throat> and I hear these freaking coyotes light off and one's in the woods and the other one's in the fields behind me. And then I'm watching, there's a frozen pond. And I'm watching out that way, and I see a coyote running across the frozen pond towards the coyote howling in the woods. And they met up and shut up for a minute, so I turned the collar off. And then I was sitting there waiting, and I turned the collar back on, and they fired back up. And the two of them ran together side by side, <laughs> straight at the collar. And I started <laughs> shooting, and I never even came close. <laughs> <laughs> That but it was like it was just set up on a tee for me and i totally screwed it up yeah jimmy that's how's the point the your season then what's that how's the rest of your season then i keep as seeing on instagram you know you're getting skunked left and right but like you know how's it been <laughs> it's been absolutely horrible <laughs> <I'd literally, laughs> i literally i literally haven't I literally haven't been on a turkey. Um, Jesus, dude. Last Sunday was the first day we had one walking right into us. And it was nothing to do with us calling. It was just what that bird does every day. Oh. And uh, one of the hens caught movement or something. Yeah. And the gobbler stayed in full strut, drumming and gobbling. But she took him right the other way. And it just didn't happen. Uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah. I got five days coming up here. We're going to make you, something happen. You got to yeah. get on something. We, we got to get Dave, Dave and a turkey, too. Yeah, I need to get yeah. a turkey. Yeah, we were close that, was it third day of season? Yeah, third day of the season. Yeah. We were so close, but uh, it did not happen. Um, uh, Josh Phelps, who was calling for me, dropped back a little bit and was yeah. trying to pull the in closer to me. Well, it just happened that our neighbor – <laughs> it just happened that our neighbor was also from the same land, maybe a hundred yards away on his property line. And uh, when my caller pulled back, the birds like lost interest and they went to the other hunter. And so our neighbor, he ended up shooting the birds that were coming into me. So that was a bummer. Yeah, yeah. we thought that's the, the coyote. We thought we had a pretty smart plan going. Phelps was he was moving back probably like 50 60 yards and up two minutes later we heard a shot yeah but you know you can't help those things that happen no and we we talked about that earlier on this podcast it's just like no matter where the property line is that seems to be where everybody wants to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah uh yeah so <laughs> yeah well, we got we, we got a nice we got a nice weekend ahead of us. You know, where our plans are to go up north uh, and hunt up there at Tim's camp. 
yeah which is obviously close to your in-laws and uh yeah we'll see if we can uh get, get a north country bird get dave hooked up with one yeah that's gonna so be I exciting think me and adam and tim have got north country birds so that's right tim has gotten one you know i have this funny thing where every time i go up to the north country to hunt birds you know i always drink too much and not many birds come <laughs> yeah. my way so <laughs> i don't know if the tradition is going to be broken this weekend or not but I, I, I won't not. Be, yeah i won't be mad either way yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't make any plans either way on that one yeah <laughs> Uh, we're, we're bringing the ATV, so, you know, we're going to have fun regardless. It's going to be nice weather. We're bringing the ATVs up, and uh, we'll have some good times. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, we'll probably catch you up there this weekend, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, I, I look forward to seeing you up there Friday. Yeah, I talked to uh, I talked to Tim here a few minutes ago, um, and I'm just going to hook up with him later. He said he's got yeah, – so he said he's got a ton of stuff going on and he's not getting anything accomplished. So, mm. um, um, well, we don't want, we don't, you don't want to do a stressed out podcast with him. No, yeah. that's what I told him. I was like, dude, I'll catch you later. Don't worry about it. Jimmy, are you going to stay with, uh, Martha's family? Or are you going to stay at the cabin with us? Yeah, I'll probably stay down there. Um, there's a, they, they got that, um, the neighbor's house there. I'm probably going to be staying in. Nice. Uh, so, I mean, I, I just have to do this because I'm on the podcast. I didn't know this would be happening here. I got <laughs> shout out, I got to shout out my buddy, Lewis, Lewis Nottinson. All right. So he is an avid listener of this podcast. Like you would not believe. Like it, it's kind of mind blowing to me. He's always like, dude, I just listened to the new podcast. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know we had a new podcast out. So this guy's on top of it. And he's my buddy. And I've skied with him for a few years. And he's going to be my future roommate in Boston. And uh, this guy, he taught himself how to hunt deer and turkey off of, like, our family from the Harveys, like, via podcast and, like, my weak advice. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> like this kid is out here. He hunted turkey nine mornings in a row. In Ver he's in Vermont. In Vermont. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's not in New York. He's up in Vermont. Yeah. yeah. I, I, ta I talked to the kid. He's a smart young guy. He's been out in the woods every morning, and he's actually on birds. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, what does this mean? Like, he started off, like, basically, like, laying down in fields, like, figuring this out. And now, like, he has proper, like, you know, hunting information. But all I'm saying is, like, this is my official shout out. Like, you guys got to get him on a podcast one of these days, whether he comes to the cabin when it's safe or, like, a Zoom call. But, like, this kid is learning how to hunt, like, dedicated that's like what we off want off of pertnier that's what like it's kind of crazy that that's definitely what this thing's all about you know we just want to for sure if people are interested in getting started what we whatever we can do to help them out and just share yeah. our experiences because i mean we sit here and we did the turkey tour or we did the turkey podcast the turkey talk podcast before season yep and mm -hmm. you know it was felt like it was great information but then we go out and get skunked for two weeks so <laughs> yeah <laughs> but no. there's only well, one thing for positive and it's you're not going to be able to do it if you're not out there so well exactly yeah, yeah. I, I thought you would like to know that one of my buddies is really impacted by all this so was he the one that asked what our beer to turkey ratio was yes exactly at this point in time, it is way more beers than turkeys, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the definitive answer. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So, hey, I'll, uh, I appreciate you guys hopping on, and we will uh, catch up, hopefully, in the North Country, but we'll see. For sure. <laughs> All right. So, thanks for having us on, and uh, good luck tomorrow morning. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. We'll catch you up there. All right, man. Take care. Yeah.